feel like it's been dark since last year. It has been dark since last year. I love it in Wisconsin. Where are you guys from? Drop a comment below. What state are you from? What country are you from? I would love to hear where you guys are at. What are you doing over the course of winter? Maybe you're somewhere warm and you're at the beach. If you are, send us pictures. We want to know what that looks like. But seriously, thank you very much for joining me again. For those of you who are visiting for the first time, my name is Angie, and the premise of I Feel the Rush is to help you bring the outdoors in so that you can bring those things from your experiences outside indoors so that you can relive that experience time and time again. So every week, Thursday night, 8 p.m., I'm coming to you live um, with ideas on how to bring that that decor to life. It's antlers, feathers, fur, whatever you can find outside and bring in, I'm doing something with it. We're crafting every week. We're coming up with some unique ideas to turn that into home decor, turn that into, um, we made purses, jewelry, you name it. I'm coming up with some crazy ideas on how to use these things. So if you have some things laying around the house, you're not really sure what to do. They're in a box somewhere and you're not sure how to make use of those. You've got a whole bunch of antlers laying around, a hide. Put a comment down below and let's get that stuff a new life. Let's spring some action into it and um, see what we can do, do with it. Because the idea is you wanna surround yourself with those things so you remember those experiences. I have stuff all over the house that every day I walk around and I see some of these same pieces but it still brings back that same excitement from that hunt, that trip, you know, whatever it might have been. So that's what we're trying to do tonight. Well, that's what we're trying to do every week. I want to share a couple things with you tonight. First off the bat, in case you hadn't seen posts about this before, I just want to bring attention to the fact that we are in the process of, of a writing project. So don't, um, don't leave us now. I just want to take one moment to tell you about this because it's about women hunting and how women, mothers, young girls are the future of the hunting um, industry. You know, we need to bring the ladies, the kids, the boys up in with hunting in the outdoors. And so we're, we're creating a book called 100 Years of Ladies Hunting. And basically what we're trying to do is inspire not just women, just people everywhere to to pursue those passions for the outdoors. Some people are nervous about trying because they just don't know people that hunt or they don't know people that um, have a passion for the outdoors. Maybe they live in a big city and they're thinking, I would love to go do that, but who do I talk to? That's what this is all about. It's gonna be a free downloadable ebook and the goal is to have that available in summer of this year, in 2020. So I'm reaching out to you guys because do you know any women, young, older, between zero and 100 years old, that's right, 100, or 100 plus, you know some, some mothers, some grandmothers, some great grandmothers, they don't have to be hunters right now. Did they ever enjoy fishing, being in the outdoors, hiking, biking, all those different kind of things, trapping, whatever it might be, I'm looking to connect with those women. So if you know someone like that, who really had a passion for the outdoors, maybe still does, Drop them, drop the name in the comments below. Send me a private message. I would love to connect with them. We have had an awesome response so far. I probably have 50, 60 um, names and stories and amazing, amazing young girls, women, older women, uh, but I'm in need of more. So we're wanting to bring as many stories to the table as we can to inspire people and let them know that it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you come from, whether you have money, you don't have money, you can enjoy the outdoors. So do that for me. Be a part of this piece. Again, it's going to be free, downloadable for everyone to share. Be inspired. Lots of laughs, some tears, but all just amazing stories about amazing people. So that's that. You'll be hearing more about that, but I wanted to share that first. Tonight, what we're talking about is we're bringing the bucket list hunts to life. Now, I know it's not January anymore. It's not the beginning of the year, but we've been talking a lot about what are people's passions? What are their passion hunts that they haven't been on yet? And I must have posted on 20 pages already. 
I'd like to go on an elk hunt. I want to go bear hunting. I would like to go hunting in Sweden. So it got me thinking, they always say to be truly successful at something, you should surround yourself that reminds you of things pertaining to your goal. So it got me thinking, why wouldn't I surround myself with things that remind me of elk hunts, bear hunts, and Sweden. So I want to do the same for you. I want to inspire you to what is that hunt you want to go on? Maybe you're not a hunter. Not everybody in this group is hunters, but are hunters. Um, what is the trip you'd like to take? What's a goal you have? Creating memory decor, creating a home decor that reminds you of your goals is super critical so that it keeps it at the forefront of your mind all the time. You're walking around the house and you see that thing and you think, that's right. That's my goal. That's what I'm going to do. It, it allows that good energy. It allows the universe to bring those things to you. It reminds you to take action on those things. So for me, it was an elk hunt. That's kind of the top of my mind right at the moment. So I'm going to be showing you back there, not yet, um, what that piece is for me tonight. And I just really want to get you thinking about what is your goal that you would like? Maybe it's this year, next year. What is it? Drop it in the comments below. Let's see what your goals are. We can help to encourage you to do those things. Maybe it's a mule deer hunt. Get some of these and hang them on the wall. Set them on a table. It will remind you of what you want to do. Moose hunt. That is also something I want to do. So I have some of these laying around. Um, I actually got these in Sweden. So, But it helps to remind me that I want to go to Sweden on a moose hunt. If you're in Sweden, I'd love to moose hunt. Um, it'll happen. I believe that it's going to happen. But I help to, you know, remind myself of that by having that kind of thing around. Um, so whatever your goal is, I'm going to try not to knock everything over with these sheds here. Whatever your goal is, pick that. Put it in the comments. Hey, Michael, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so put that comment down below and I will help to encourage you whatever your goal is. I would love to help you in that process. So I will not wait any further and I will show you the project that I worked on tonight. So it's not actually antlers, fur or feathers, but it is pertaining to that. It's pertaining to an elk hunt. And the things that I use to create this, because as always, I like to start with the materials. We'd like to keep it super inexpensive. Wendy, moose hunt, zebra hunt. That's a great idea. I'm going to remind you of that. and I'm going to help push you to that goal because, girl, that's fantastic. Where do you live, Wendy? We need to plan a moose hunt. <laughs> um, so tonight the project is um, a few things. I'll, to I'll show you a few of the materials. I don't want to get sidetracked too much. Um, I used some black paint. Doesn't have to be special. Look in the basement. I'm sure you have some. If you don't, it's a couple dollars at Walmart. Um, or if you don't have that, a brush and some acrylic paint will work just fine. Iowa. Iowa's fantastic. You don't have moose there, but Iowa's a fantastic place to hunt. Um, um, a knife, a sharp knife. You won't need too much of this. Um, some hot glue. Again, I have feathers all over my hot glue gun. I hope you guys are not too embarrassed by that. Um, you can use a marker or a pencil, just something to be drawing with. And you will find out in just one moment what that is. The last two things that you need are, as you can see, is the big, um, mm, I don't know what to call, what you call that. I lost, lost my train of thought for the moment. It's a big painting board on a frame. This happens. It's late in the evening. I can't remember the name of, of that thing over there that you paint on. Um, and then also a poster. Now, when I show you this, this will make sense. I ordered a poster from Walgreens. I picked out a picture of a mountain scene from Colorado. And I ordered it on Walgreens and I picked it up the same day. I waited until there was a 40% off and I got it for $13. The frame up there was also on sale for $5 over Christmas. So that's say $20 right there. Um, so very little investment in my materials here. And I'm going to show you what I did. Now, one thing I wanna preface this by saying is, as we know, everything doesn't turn out perfectly. When I did this project, I have a few tips and a few tricks. So when you see it, I'm gonna give you some suggestions on how you can make it better and what I'm going to do the next time. That's kind of one of the reasons I like to do this as well is so that when I try it, you can learn first. It's like measure twice, cut once. Let me do it and tell you what mistakes I made. So we're going to go right over here and I'm going to show you how what I did. 
All right, there's actually two pieces. Now, I'll show you this first one, but then I'll show you the rest. Okay, so I'm going to put this back up here so you can see it. I hope it doesn't fall over. Whoops. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to show you exactly what I did. I took the big whiteboard and I took this was a poster. That was a full-size poster of... You'll be able to see it better on the second piece. This was a full-size poster of a mountain scene in Montana, Colorado, somewhere like that. But it was a reflection. So down here, you'll see uh, this was a mountain scene here, up here. And then this was the reflection. Now, if I was going to do this again, because I wanted to get the big elk in there, um, I would pick a picture that was like a little bit lower, like the mountain scene was more down here, so you get more of the mountains in the picture. But I will say, the elk turned out fantastic! Now, the way that I did that was I went on to Pinterest. For those of you who listen to me often enough, I talk about Pinterest all the time. Because I was able to find a silhouette of an elk, and then I was able to trace it on the back side of this poster, and then cut it out using the little knife. So all I did was cut around where I penciled it in. And the good thing is when you're, when you're drawing it on the back side of the poster, you can totally mess it up. I must have redrawn this probably four or five times before I felt like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. And I want to also mention that it doesn't have to be perfect. You see, it looks like an elk, right? right? I hope so. <laughs> um, but I'm not an artist, people. It just took a little bit of drawing, a little bit of erasing, and a little bit of faith that that elk would uh, turn out to be the right shape. But what I really wanted to show you is uh, the second piece. All right. Now, now you can actually see that mountain scene. Now this is kind of the opposite of what I was actually planning to do um, because I wanted to have the mountain scene inside my elk. But this actually turned out pretty cool. So actually out of one poster, I got two pieces. So I got the, the silhouette of the elk because what I did was I used my black spray paint and I sprayed the whole entire canvas. Canvas, that's the word. I knew I'd get it eventually. I sprayed the whole entire canvas this morning before I left for work. And then once it was dry, this is actually what was left over from tracing my elk. Can you see the elk there? It's a little hard to see here. You can kind of see now. <laughs> but um, so basically I just wanted to show you what it would look like to have a beautiful picture in the background. Now you might have pictures of your own that are from a trip that you took, from a particular place you want to go. Um, so keep in mind, you can do that for super inexpensive on Walgreens, on Walmart, whatever it might be. I'm going to put this back up here so you can stop staring at the side of my face. All right, and now you can see it. So yeah, so what I just wanted to show you guys was how inexpensively you could be creating your own artwork um, inspired by the hunts that you're going to take. So again, for two, two pieces, I got out of the one poster. So make sure you're watching for a discount online. Go check out Walgreens or Walmart or wherever you do your photo shopping. And secondly, if you don't have any super awesome pictures of mountains like that, go to unsplash.com. You can download free images that are amazingly beautiful and you don't have to pay for them. Uh, and they're perfect. I can tell you I've taken a lot of pictures of mountain scenes and they're not as good as the ones that were on Unsplash. So I went there and downloaded that picture and had my, my um, poster ordered within five, 10 minutes. I picked it up in an hour. And by this morning, I was painting that canvas and had these done this afternoon after work. So another thing I want to tell you for those of you who are just seeing us for the first time, we always try to keep these projects not only super inexpensive, super easy because 
I'm not a professional. Every week that I do these with you guys, usually it's the first time I'm trying something that's been on my list of craft ideas. And I just want to give it a try. I want to share it with you guys to show you how simple it is. You don't have to spend a lot of money um, on cabin decor, on home decor. You can do these yourself for super, super inexpensive. So again, those were the materials, the time that it took to probably do these, maybe an hour, like super inexpensive. So do you want to go on elk hunt, a moose hunt, a bear hunt, whatever? Find a silhouette on Pinterest, on Google, and you can trace on the back of the poster, cut it out. I hot glued that on there um, just because it was quick, but you can use any sort of glue, E6000, you can probably use Mod Podge, something like that. So I'm super excited about this because you know what? I think that elk hunt is coming and I'm gonna just send it off into the universe and I'm gonna look at it every day and remind myself that someday that's gonna be my elk. I hope he's that big. <laughs> I just love to hear the elk, the sound of them bellowing. I've been to Colorado and Montana and been super close, but to go on a hunt would be like a dream come true. So it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So please, please drop it in the comments below. What are your goals? It doesn't have to be hunting, whatever it is. You tell me and I will help you create some home decor that will help to remind you of what your goals are. And it's going to happen, whatever it is. So I'm going to help you out along the way. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please share it to your page, share it with your friends and family. I hope you were inspired by this to create some home decor, to encourage yourself to pursue your dreams and your passions. And going back to the hundred years of ladies hunting, if you know ladies that like to be in the outdoors and would like to be included in this piece, I would love to have them. It's super simple and um, be looking for more information about that. So. Thank you again so much. I'm so glad you guys were with me and I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday right here, Facebook Live, 8 p.m. every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central. So thanks again, everybody. I appreciate every single one of you. Have a great night. Bye.